Hey guys, Anthony Petrovona here, back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the top five names that I like to follow to sell options on because they have a higher implied volatility. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, or swing trading, you're going to want to subscribe. I wanna help you achieve financial freedom in the market. Give this video a thumbs up at the end if you appreciate it, and let's dive into the charts. Currently in my account, I have a bunch of options expiring today on Riot, Lucid, and Blink. These were high implied volatility names, as well as Affirm, but that's expiring next week. The few of the names that we're gonna talk about today are focused in the electric vehicle sector, as well as crypto. We're looking at stocks like Riot, Mara, Lucid, Rivian, and Blink. The reason why is because these all have very high implied volatilities. They've had massive runs, so the premiums are high for these stocks, which means that if we sell puts or sell calls, we can collect a lot of money as long as the options contracts expire out of the money. So we're gonna be looking at some expirations in December because what you'll also notice is that anything expiring next week in November is a little lower, but the December expirations are much higher. The first thing we wanna do before we ever place a trade is to look at the chart. And we're on the daily chart using the Heiken Ashes with Lucid here, up 10% on the day. We're sitting at about $52 per share. We go parabolic, we consolidate sideways, we go parabolic, we consolidate sideways, we go parabolic. And then we had a savage sell off with a nice rebound. So we could consolidate here and possibly make another leg up. But if we take a look at the RSI, we're seeing the RSI making a downward slope on the daily chart. So basically what's happening is this is signifying weakness. The RSI is decreasing as the stock is holding up. That's something called bearish divergence. So if the RSI is making lower highs, while the stock is making higher highs or higher lows, that's bearish divergence, which means that it's likely for Lucid to actually come down in the short to medium term. Just based on these technical indicators right now, we see the MACD closing off, we see the stochastic falling down below. So based on those indicators, it looks like that. We see volume decreasing. These are all signs that we could start a downtrend and start making lower highs. Now, this isn't for sure, but this is something we can use to our advantage when, it, when we're talking about placing trades. We might want to look at a top of about 65 still uh, if, if we're looking at the expiration in two weeks. So we might sell something like the 65 call and we might want to look at the floor being 40 or if we want to be a little bit safer, we might choose about 35 as the floor for Lucid. We would probably look at a strangle where we sell the call of the 65 strike and we sell a put at the 35 strike. So let's take a look at what kind of premiums we could pick up. So on Lucid, we're on Interactive Brokers again. What you're seeing is if we type in the implied volatility for Lucid, the December strike is in orange here. So December, the implied volatility is 122%, which is fantastic. We're gonna turn the strategy builder on. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the 35 put. We're gonna click sell leg. We get 36 cents per contract on that, which is about a 1% return because the strike is 35. So 36 cents on 35 is a 1% return, just so you know for future reference. And then we go over to the 65 call, and there's gonna be a lot more money in premiums. Yeah, so the 65 call is $2.23. We could honestly choose the 70. I would choose the 70 because the, the premiums are so juicy. This is over a 2% return here, so I would do the 70 strike call in the 35 put. We would sell that strangle, and this is what we'd see. Now, there's infinite risk on either side, so you have to be careful of that. We're gonna look at about 10 contracts because for my account size, this might be a trade that I would put on. Margin impact is 40,000 US. We're gonna click on profile to see how the trade would pan out and the return would be get. So we would be collecting $1,900 and it's showing the margin apply here of actually 35,600. So what this basically means is you can double that and it's about 70,000 in buying power to go ahead and collect $1,900. If Lucid is higher than 35 and below 70 by the beginning of December, then we keep all the $1,900 and then we have more buying power to put on a new trade. However, if Lucid goes to 80 by the beginning of December, we're taking a 10K loss. If Lucid goes to 30 by the beginning of December, we're taking a 3K loss. So remember, these trades need to be managed. You have to have strict rules on where you're gonna cut losses if it goes outside the strikes. I personally cut these losses as soon as it goes outside of the strike because I'm not looking to let this go parabolic and have a massive loss that's gonna blow up my entire account. None of this is financial advice, but I just wanna show you the possibilities of what kind of trade you could put on. So basically you get a 2.7% rate of return on this trade by selling the 35 strike put with the 70 strike call expiring in two weeks. If you wanna do this trade a lot safer, you're gonna actually do something called as an iron condor, 
This is where you buy a farther dated call strike and you buy a farther dated put strike to cap off the loss. So again, this is something you might want to look into if you want to go ahead and put on a trade like this. The next trade we're gonna look at is on Rivian and it doesn't show the implied volatility because the stock came out so soon so we can't even see what it's gonna look like but based on the premiums, we can see that it's right around the same implied volatility as Lucid. On Rivian on the daily chart, we can't see a lot. It's up 11.6% on the day, sharp recovery from before. So what we wanna do is maybe go down to the four hour time frame, run up all the way to high 170s, sell off to a low about 120, nice bounce to the high 130s. I personally would stay away from doing any big positions on Rivian if we're looking to sell options because it could honestly go anywhere, but I would also feel relatively safe that we're not going to push up to that $200 level anytime soon because again, the market cap is 120 billion. I would probably go with the 190 call and I would look at the 100 put. We're at the December 3rd expiration. We're going to take a look at how much money we get for selling the 100 strike. So not bad, actually. We get $1.65, which is one and a half percent, which is really good, honestly in terms of premium. So we would sell that leg and then we would go up to the 200 strike. And yeah, we collected a dollar and a half. That's almost 1%. So this is also pretty good premiums. So we'd sell that leg. And this is the strangle that we'd be looking to sell. We're gonna do about five contracts because that would take up about the same buying power as the Lucid trade. We would collect 1500 as long as Rivian stays between 100 and 200 in the next two weeks. Break even price is 97 or 203. So we don't want Rivian to go below 97 or above 203. I would feel pretty confident in that. Profit probability says 83%, and you could collect 1,500 in premium there. But again, if it goes outside those numbers, then you're in trouble. This range is so huge that I would still feel comfortable putting on this trade, in my opinion. Last stock we're looking at in the EV sector is on Blink. Implied volatility is a little lower than Rivian and Lucid, so we're sitting at about 90% for the December expiration. We're gonna pull it up on the chart. Daily chart had some parabolic rises. I actually closed out my previous strangle where I had the 47 strike, and I left some premium on the table. I had to take like a $10,000 loss to roll it out. I rolled it out and then it sold off and and then I collected 8,000 back and I closed out the trade. I, I took about a 2,000 loss on the whole trade if you look back at my previous videos, but I luckily made up for it because I bought Blink when it was 34 and I sold it at 39 with 100,000 position size and the profit on that trade was about 14,000 US. So it makes up for the short strangle that I took the loss on, but just so you know, you know, you could definitely lose and you have to manage these positions. It looks like the RSI is making higher highs and higher lows. So we're making the stair stepping and this could actually continue up towards the $50 level somewhere in there. It does look like we are falling down a bit on the stochastic, but again, still higher lows on the daily chart. We're topping out a bit on the MACD, but this could be just a consolidation for a few days and then another leg up to the 50s. It looks like there's thin resistance from about 47 to about 51 heavier resistance coming in about 53. If I was gonna sell strangles, it would be using the $60 resistance there. And I would like to use a support of 35 or 30. If I wanna do a really wide spread, I would do a $30 level put and a $60 level call expiring in two weeks. Let's just take a look at the weekly chart first. So yeah, it looks really bullish on the weekly chart. The weekly chart looks like we could make a new all time high. It's tough to say because look at this previous time. We just signed the infra infrastructure bill. EVs have been hot. It looks like we could likely cool down in the EV sector. But for the sake of this trade, let's look at the 60 call and the 35 put. On Blink, we go to the 35 put and this is about 1.2% because it's 44 cents. We collect at the 35 strike. We would collect sell leg. And then we go to the call, scroll to about 60 strike and we'll collect 1%. So this is a, yeah, this is a pretty good trade, but a little sketchier on the upside. I feel like that 60 call, you never know with Blink because the short float is so high. It, it's, it likes to squeeze. So like it did on me previously, it did a fat, it did a crazy squeeze and I had to take a loss. So I personally am a little more fearful of selling calls on Blink. If we use about uh, 15 contracts, we would collect 1500 and the margin would be again around 60,000. So this would be another 2% return on our investments with this expiring in two weeks. So basically all the trades I've showed so far are about a 2% return or higher in two weeks. And that's amazing. I've talked about my strategy before where I like to use my buying power to sell calls or sell puts to collect an extra two to 4% a month. 
So this 2% in two weeks lines right up with that 4% a month. But again, we take some losses on some trades. That's why it really balances out to a true 2% per month using the leverage as long as we manage positions correctly. As an example, if we let this trade run and Blink pushes up to about $70 in two weeks before our expiration, well then the loss we would take would be about 15,000. So you're collecting 1,500 if it expires worthless, but if you have to close out the position when Blink's at 70 in two weeks because of a squeeze, well, it's a $15,000 loss. So I just want everyone to be aware that these are really high risk strategies and they require a lot of focus and attention to manage these positions. If you don't want to put as much focus and emphasis into managing these, these positions, then you want to cap the loss with an iron condor. If you have any questions about iron, what iron condors are, leave it in the comments below and I can do a full video just like this using iron condors instead. The returns we get on iron condors are less, but the risk is also much less. All right, let's take a look at the miners now, Riot and Mara. Riot's implied volatility is at 127% for December, so this is looking excellent. Let's take a look at the chart for Riot. Making a nice push up, we're at $36.44. Good recovery from yesterday. We've been selling off the last few days, but on the weekly chart, it looks very strong. Weekly chart looks like we could push up to $50 in a few weeks. Yeah, daily chart doesn't look like we're gonna do anything special. Uh, definitely looks like we will have heavy resistance at 54, 55. So it's unlikely to really see 60. We could sell the 60 strike. And then in terms of puts, I would like the 29 or to be really safe, I would do the 26. Let's take a look at the wider spread. So let's use the 26 put and the 60 call. Just over 1% for that one because it's 32 cents for the 26 strike. And then we go to the calls on 60 and it's 1% as well. So when you get 1% on both sides, that's awesome. You can use more leverage because you're selling a call and you're selling a put. So you can only theoretically lose on one side. And because of that, your broker will give you more buying power on these trades when you short strangles. Margin applied is 37,400 and the return we get is 1400. So again, that lines up with our 2% return and the break even price will be $25 on the downside and $61 on the upside. So as long as Riot is above 25 by expiration and below 61, we make money. So this is a trade I feel safer with. I, I like this range and I also like this return. A 2% return on a range like this on Riot, I feel much safer with because Riot can definitely push up to 50 in two weeks and Riot's not likely to drop much below 30 in the next two weeks. So because of those two combos, I like this trade. I might honestly put on this trade. Uh, I might close out some positions and put this one on. So far, I really like the Lucid trade the most and I like the Riot trade the most. You don't wanna put all your trades in the EV sector. You don't wanna put all your trades in the crypto sector, but I do like trading in the EV and the crypto sector for selling calls and selling puts because again, premiums are high so we can collect more money. Before we put on the Riot trade, let's look at Mara because we could like what we see here better. Implied volatility is higher. We see about 150% on the December expiration. So let's take a look at the chart for Mara. Mara's having more strength on the day, up about 10% sitting at 56. If you saw my video previously, I did have to close out Mara for a loss, the strangle. I did the 80 strike and the 50 strike, and I closed it out because Mara got to about 82. And I was fearful when Bitcoin was hitting an all-time high that it would keep pushing up. It sold off and I could have waited longer and actually not have taken a loss, but I had to manage the position accordingly in case it went explosive. Luckily, I hedged the position by buying $100,000 worth of the Riot stock and that went up about five or 10% and I took profits on that. And again, it made up for the loss. One thing to keep in mind is Riot and Mara like to take turns taking the stride. Mara has been far outperforming Riot. So what we could start to see is Riot having more strength and Mara having more weakness going into a downtrend. This could be the new high and we could be in a downtrend for Mara, whereas before Riot had spiked up and it's been showing very little weakness in compared to the chart of Mara. What I would bank on is we, we see this lower strength in the RSI. We see a bottom on the stochastic showing we could be going higher, but in my opinion, it looks based on, on these indicators and based on what I know with them taking turns, I could see that we would be in a downtrend with Mara and it's not likely that we make a new high in the next two weeks. So I would use the 80 strike on Mara and I would I would be going lower using the support here about 30. I would like the 80 call and the 30 put. On the weekly chart looks like we get a consolidation and continue higher. But on the daily chart, it looks like we're topping. Tough calls, tough calls. Uh, because of the weekly chart looking so strong, I'm gonna use the 85 call 
and I'm gonna use the 30 put. We pull up Mara, we chose a December 3rd expiration, scroll to the 30 strike put, that only sells for 10 cents, so that's not good there. We're gonna go with the 35 put. So 35 put and 85 call, this is less than 1%, so there's clearly a huge call skew for Mara. Click sell the leg, we go to the 85 call, we're seeing about a, almost a 2% return on the 85 strike call. So we sell those two legs. I'm not really fond of this trade, it feels high risk for me. Again, as long as Mars above 33 and below 86, then we're happy and we're making money. But if it goes outside those numbers, we can take losses. Top two favorites are the Riot trade and the Lucid trade. I actually went ahead and made that Lucid trade with 20 contracts and I collected about 3,900 US for the 20 contracts, as you can see here, December 3rd, 35, 70 short strangle, which means I'm selling the 35 put and I'm selling the 70 call. Let me know what stocks you're looking at and what you're looking to trade. If you have any stocks you wanna make videos on, leave them in the comments below. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.